Even with the current focus on BIM and moving to 3D workflows, construction documentation still involves the production of detailed drawings, and typically these are 2D drawings, sometimes overlaid on some 3D information, but by and large, 2D details are done that way because it doesn't make sense to model every flashing and nut and bolt and little bit of insulation in 3D. We've developed the Detailer tool to help with this. It's strictly a 2D tool and we'll show you now a quick overview of how this tool can help you get your details done more quickly. This is not an atypical set of details and this one is from Kennedy Associates Architects in Sydney. There's actually a lot of repetition in what you see. Now these are sections primarily and uh, details of this are obviously at a, at a larger scale. But even in the section you're seeing repetition of rafters and ceiling joists and brickwork and battens and concrete and insulation and suspended ceilings and a lot of this stuff ends up being not symbolized so that it's quite inefficient to draw and if modifications have to be made they can also be quite tedious. So it would be really good if a lot of the profiles for all of this stuff was all pre done for you and that's in fact what we've done with the detailer tool. We've also looked very closely at the red book and reproduced many of the section and plan details to produce all of the kinds of walls, ceiling assemblies and floors that you'll see in the red book. Let's talk about the concept for this tool and you'll find the tool in the detailing tool set and that's the tool icon that you can see there. The tool is a linear plug-in object which means that when you draw it you'll actually draw a line to define some portion of the detail and then that's called the center component and you can control the width of that component or the thickness of that component and then on top of that you can add up to four left-hand components and four right-hand components and you'll get a little indicator here that's at the start end and pointing to the left so you always know which way the uh, unit is oriented. Now a couple of examples here's a, a stud wall that has some battens on it so the center component contains some studs, uh, a bottom plate, a top plate, uh, a noggin then it has some battens and maybe some plasterboard or something on the outside all of this is driven by choices from a dialogue. So if we jump into the dialogue, we can see that the center component has a 90 by 45 start at the start, 90 by 45 start at the end or the top, and there's, there's an intermediate symbol being used, uh, which is also 90 by 45. The first left component is the batten, 40 by 35 batten, and then on top of that is applied 13 millimeter plasterboard one thickness. So when you open these pop-up menus you're going to see uh, a huge list of predefined things that you can choose from, from fills to lining materials, masonry, bricks, concrete blocks, panel products, roof tile, ceramic, concrete, terracotta, sheet metal, so fielders, sections, lysart sections, steel, all the rondo sections, purlin, C sections, tubular sections, then in timber there's cladding, decking, dressed timber, flooring profiles, framing profiles, lots of different ones for, for floor joists and rafters, lining boards and all of the porters molds all in there as well. So lots to choose from and of course these are all symbols so you can customize them or, uh, or make your own. Uh, so that's basically how you get to set the unit up. So let's click OK to that and then just point out a couple of other things. You can optionally turn on the ability to show the control points of all of the components and this allows you to independently change the starting and 
endpoints of the components. And this, this means that you can overlap these and get them aligning and do corner junctions and things like that very easily. Of course, you can control the spacing of all of these things um, and insulation and all sorts of other things as well. We won't go into all the details. And here's, a, here's another example of, uh, of a series. We'll just quickly jump into the dialogue for that. There's four components on each side. There's the shaft liner. There's a, a, a space. Then there's the, the Rondo studs and the linear material and same on the other side. Let's finally look at some examples of this tool being put into use. And what I'm going to do is to just replicate to some degree this detail from the Kennedy Associates details. And what we've got here is some corrugated sheeting, insulation, rafters, brickwork and so on. Let's have a look how you would put that together with a detailer tool. So this top section here, it contains the rafters and the center components that we need. On the left it has a, what we call a nominated thickness which gives us this gap between the rafters and the sheeting, in other words the battens, and then we use this portion of a corrugated sheet to produce the roof sheeting. So that one's very simple. And again if we've got the show control points on, you can control all the elements individually where they start and finish. And what that allows you to do, of course, is here we've got one detailer unit butting into another detailer unit. And it's very easy then to just make it continuous, make the roof profile line up and so on. Here we've got some brickwork. Again, I can drag this down and the bricks are just going to grow or shrink as I do that. We've added some lining on one side of this and we've also added a, a profile. So this is the, if we have a look in here, there's three components on this side. There's the center components comprise the brick cavity. There's a brick on the right hand side. There's a brick on the left hand side. Then there was some plasterboard lining and then there was a an architrave and that's what we're seeing here in these components. Here a very simple ceiling section, some insulation, some ceiling joists, some plasterboard and a cove. All of that is done with the tool. A more complex assembly and this one comes from the red book is this suspended ceiling. And the great thing about the suspended ceiling, they're quite tedious to draw. And again, we'll just turn off the show components. I can just drag this down and it's going to draw out to whatever length it needs to be. If I need to make the rods longer, I can just come down here and change this. And the ceiling is just going to get lower or higher. And the other thing I can do is to set where the control line is. So in this assembly here the control line is actually in the center of the whole thing but in this one here the control line is on the top so when you were putting one of these in a drawing you could just trace the underside of the rafters or the the slab or whatever it was and you could easily then just place that correctly aligned down the bottom here we see some of the other sections from the red book some of these acoustic walls quiet stud wall, staggered studs, and here are a couple of examples of a section through some LVL joists with some particle board on the top and then a side view of that as well. And again you can see the control line in this case is on the bottom of the assembly not on the top. And for this roof assembly here, this is a rafter, the center of component you can change the angles of the ends and as I draw this out this is going to get uh, longer or shorter according to uh, to the control line. And there's lots of other things I can talk about but there's not time tonight but I just wanted to show one other thing here. When you're doing a detail often detail drawings are more diagrammatic and here it's unclear as to what's actually happening here with the membrane between the, the wall sheeting and the tile. So you can actually separate these components 
So if I add some separation here, say four millimeters, you can see these components are all going to move apart a little bit. So I can clearly see this uh, profile for the bottom plate. And maybe I'll increase the one on the left hand side as well, just to push that apart. So now I can clearly see this and I can clearly see the membrane in here and you can just vary that according to the scale of the detail and so on.